His stash from all things dentistry, the place where we're passionate about sharing those unwritten hits and tips of dentistry. Well, I tried the endo sequence, controlled memory, reciprocating files today for the first time. Absolutely, I, it blew my mind. Anyways, we're going to walk through this case. This is the access part of the, of the case. There's a bunch of learning from this case. I love it because it's got a really large, huge, large apical lesion. And we're going to track together as a community. And let's see... If by placing long-term calcium hydroxide, like my buddy, my mentor, Dr. Best, who actually just texted me the other day, I can't believe it, I'm trying to get a hold of him for 15 years, talks about it in his article, and we're going to we're gonna do what he did and had amazing success. Anyways, we're going to walk through the axis in this case, and then over the next couple of weeks, we'll go through the whole case and see how it goes. Anyways, thank you so much for joining me. Let's jump into it. Hey, Ash here, and let's go ahead and walk through this case. So there is, this is the preoperative radiograph. Um, I'm going to cut to the chase, tooth number 26, necrotic with asymptomatic hippoparentitis. The real question I'm looking for is why is this tooth necrotic? And I think what it was, they hit the pulp horn when the patient was many, many years ago because the most recent radiograph, the, the latest, the oldest radiographs we have from 2018, it was still a huge lesion. So I didn't grab a comb beam for this case. I didn't feel that was necessary. You could argue that because of the size of the uh, the lesion, you should, um, you know, put in, you know, what are your thoughts? Put it in the, in the contents below. Anyways, let's get into the access. We're going to break this tooth down into chunks. So there's our tooth number two six. This is the palatal canal, the palatal side. This is the buckle, and we're going to be. There is a bit of a restoration there, so let's go ahead and speed along here. So what we're going to be doing is taking our number four long surgical round burr, and we're going to be accessing into this tooth. So we're going to, you know, we're not going to keep it, we're going to keep a decent size so we can see everything. So first I touch the tooth, you ask the patient, do you feel anything? They're like, nope. And off we go. And that gives me some confidence and it gives them some confidence. So what I'm doing here is I'm just removing a bit of the composite. I'm trying to feel out where the composite is. And that's about it. So at the same time that I'm doing my access, so at the same time I'm looking straight down to see where the the end of my burr is, I'm also looking at the side of my tooth to see where that six millimeter mark is on the side of the tooth to make sure that, you know, even though this is an open chamber, life is still easy to, it's still easy to perf root canals. And, you know, I find that when I become complacent, mistakes happen. So I'm always tracking to see the side of, you know, I'm looking to see where we are in the six millimeters of the side of the tooth. That's Musicant, Deutsche Musicant in 2002. Talk about six millimeters from the tip of the, from the top of the pole chamber to the cusp, mesobuccal cusp. So here we are where I'm, you know, I'm kind of I'm like, okay, well, I'm close to six millimeters. Why am I not in? So we've got some kind of mineralized dentin right there. This is the distal here. So there's a distal race restoration. And we're still trying to track our way in. So I'm like, okay, well, we still got space. My experience has been roughly six to seven millimeters. Um, so that burr, the end of that burr gets a little bit further down. But of course, I never want to perf. So also the other thing that's going through my mind is just the angulation of the burr, that I'm not angling it mesial because I just repaired a perf from whatever a dentist that went way mesial. And I've done that before on a molar, mandibular molar. Uh, it's keeping in line with the kind of the, the curvature of the tooth. So I'm kind of like, hmm, we should be in by now, right? Open pulp chamber, like wide open. So I'm going to take my Explorer <clears throat> and kind of poke around. And let's see if we get it here. There we go. And then, boom, like, oh, sweet. That's like the best feeling ever. <laughs> like, okay, we're in the pulp chamber. Doesn't look like it's hemorrhaging, so my initial diagnosis seems to be correct. I'm like, okay, perfect. So the next thing I'm going to do is, I think I made, made it large enough in my Explorer that I'm going to use my endo Z burr. And unfortunately, there's not much to see here. The tip of that burr, as you know from the course, the tip of the burr is just rolling around along the, the bottom of the pulp, the pulpal floor and kind of giving us that shape according to kind of what the, the pulp chamber gives us. So if you're really connected with this video, Check us out at allthingsendo.ca. It's our course that we have online, and we also have a private Facebook group that talks about cases like this. This actually is posted, it will be posted, in, or it has been by now you've watched it into the video, um, into our private Facebook group. So anyways, it's root canal like an endodontist. It's a, we've got a lot of great cases that are going on with our students, and it's system-based, and you know what? 
I know what it's like to be alone and doing root canals. So check us out, join the course, and be part of a group that is all about learning. Anyways, I hope to see you. So then, you know, all these teeth in our practice is, they're all, so there you can see, we have a partial necrotic. It's hard to believe, but we still have some, it, the tooth was necrotic. Uh, it tested necrotic. It's got a large lesion. It is necrotic, but it's still kind of partially necrotic, and that's why that, that hemorrhage there is actually coming from the distal buckle. You know, distal buckle could be, I, that's one of the things, you know, I was thinking as I was doing this, like distal buckle, those buckle canals could be sitting in soft tissue, so maybe there's hemorrhage from that. So as a pre <clears throat> precursor, I could have started this before um, I started my access, but all these teeth are going to be getting some sort of cuspal coverage restoration, and because the meso well, the meso contact's not broken, so we're not going to I'm going to not going to break the contact to put a restoration there, like a cuspal coverage composite. That's what's going to go on here afterwards. And what I'm going to do, I'm not really a huge fan of crowns. Um, the literature talks about crowns, but they also talk about onlay. So I'm really a, a direct onlay fan because then we get the patient done and you know completed after this appointment. Not this appointment. This is going to be two stages, but after you know it does. I don't need two appointments for an indirect restoration. So I'm using this huge pancake burr, and yes, I should have been doing depth cuts and speed it up, um, but I've got a pretty good idea now. That's about a one one and one and a quarter millimeter thickness of that pancake, or you flying UFO. And there we go. So we've got a stable reference point. We've reduced the tooth, so it's not going to be inclusion and fracture. Because what we're going to do is we're going to place calcium hydroxide for a very long time in this tooth just to make sure we get some resolution. All right, so that is our access. And if you see this file, this is actually the first time I'm using the endosequence reciprocating. It's called CM, controlled memory. So the ESR controlled memory reciprocating file. And I'll be honest, it's actually pretty amazing. So. I'm going to stop it there, and then we'll, uh, we'll catch up at the next appointment, or our next, next video. Thanks for being here. I really appreciate it. Cheers.